I want you to, to, to think about this. We don't see diamonds just out in the street, just out and about. Or do y'all? No. Oh, I know. I'm about to say, I need to go on those streets. Everybody can like, you don't see diamonds? All right. Make sure everybody awake, including me. So, we see all kind of stones and rocks and stuff, but we don't see diamonds. And then I was also thinking about Lamborghinis, Rolls Royces. You don't see those things all the time. They're rare. They're not prevalent. You don't see a lot of those things. And that is why they have value, because they're rare. High value, because they're rare. So, the Holy Spirit said to me that we are supposed to have high value. We're supposed to have high value. Because... It should be rare what we can do. Shouldn't see it any and everywhere. Okay, this is how y'all gonna treat me this morning. All right. We belong to Jesus. He empowered us. We're supposed to be able to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Yes. Somebody has a problem, we're supposed to be able to tell them exactly what God has said. We are supposed to be rare. Yes. So what happened? Somebody has a problem and they share their problem with us. And we go right along and complain right along with them, child, I don't know. About, I don't know, eight months ago or so, Joshua was sitting on my lap, my little, he was three? Yeah, he was three then, sitting on my lap. And I said, Joshua, oh my goodness, my shoulder is hurting. My neck, rather, is just hurting. So he came over and he laid hands on me. And he likes to, you know, whenever we quicken, because the Holy Spirit, we call it quickening, but the Holy Spirit kind of jolts us. So he's not, he's familiar with the movement. So when he lays hands, (laughs) send the name of Jesus. So he just pushes. And so he did that. He said, Daddy. Does your neck feel better? No. He said, Daddy, is it still hurting? I said, yes. He said, yeah, I hurt my head the other day too. (laughs) (laughs) I said, what? Yeah, yeah, I hurt my head, I hit my head the other day too. Like, so, we need to understand the value of who we are and what we do, or else we will compromise the situation. So, you didn't get healed? Well, yeah, I tell you what. So, when people complain... We're supposed to get rid of that. People have problems. We're supposed to help them with that. We're supposed to be rare. I can get somebody complain with me all day. Even Joshua. Yeah, I hit my head too. 
I know what you're going through, Dad. I know your pain. We need to be solution-oriented people. Amen. You know, when I, when, when I encounter customer service that is whew, just top-notch, I mean just top-notch, I go to certain restaurants or whatever the business is, whatever the situation is, and I like to ask them, you know, how's business? Like, oh my goodness gracious, it's just been so busy or oh goodness, I can't, it's just so much. And so I look at them, I say, well, it's your own fault. Like, what? I say, if you weren't good at what you're doing, nobody would be here. When I travel and I see two restaurants side by side, this place is packed. This place looks like it could literally close down anytime it wants. You're like, right next door. What is the deal? What is the deal? What are we offering that's drawing people? We're supposed to be rare. Can't find me everywhere. Glover, how long did you go to school for flooring, to do flooring? How many years of schooling did you have to uh, learn how to do flooring? Huh? None? But y'all see the lobby and all this. He put everything down piece by piece. Literally, piece by piece. He created the design. He didn't go to school for it. He does tiling for the bathroom designs like crazy. Hardwood flooring, luxury vinyl flooring, carpeting. Didn't go to school for it. How many of y'all in here can do that? You're rare, sir. So you have a value. You ain't even go. <clears throat> you didn't even go to school for it. Huh. Hmm. So. Are you valuable? Are you valuable? Can you do something that nobody else in this room can nobody else in this room? There are only about 85, 90 people in here. Can you do something nobody else in here can do? Hmm. You see, we don't focus in on ourselves like we need to. We focus on too many other people. Jesus didn't say, love your neighbor, period. He made it a point to say, love your neighbor as yourself. If you don't love yourself, you're definitely not going to love your neighbor. What can you do? What is your value? Why are you here on earth? You see, when people call you, are they going to get the help? Somebody say, I'm going through this, I'm going through that, I'm going through the other. This is what God is saying. You know, I can always depend on you. I can always depend on you. I just, psh, I'm sick. The Lord just told me to tell you this. I'm going through in my marriage. The Lord just told me to tell you this. I'm going through in my job. The Lord just told me, man, you are valuable. You always have a word from God, and it's exactly what I need. You don't find that everywhere. Are you valuable? Well, 
Of course, we've been talking about heaven on earth because that's the way Jesus, well, that's the way God designed it. Sent Jesus here to show us the kingdom so that the kingdom of heaven can be on earth. How it is in heaven as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. What's in heaven should be on earth. Everything. Every single thing in terms of the way, the, the methodology, however God handles things in heaven, that's the way we're supposed to handle it here on earth. That's what Jesus did and that's what he told us to do. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's rare. Why do you think the Bible says narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. You know, everybody is so easy to go the broad way and just do whatever you want to do. Nobody wants that narrow way where you can't go too much to the left or the right. You got that straight and narrow way that leads to heaven. How many people have ever driven a car? How many of you, you've driven on the highway and it's kind of rough and stuff and then you get on a road that looked like it was, feels like it was just paved and it's just smooth. That smooth road, that's that straight and narrow way. Want to know why? You ain't that many cars on that road. So you ain't going to have too many potholes on the straight and narrow you go on that Broadway, you boom, 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 boom. Everybody's on that, those roads. Straight and narrow, smooth sailing. <laughs> Why do you think when people get saved and they start living for God, they're like, ooh, everything's just wonderful. Now, I'm not saying. <laughs> that when you get saved, you're not going to go through some things. You're definitely going to go through some things. There are going to be some tunnels where you can't see your way. Yes. You're going to have some feelings. You're going to have some rain. You're going to have some hell. You're going to have some storms. Yes. You're definitely going to have those things. <laughs> Just to let you know. <laughs> but guess what? They also have that on the Broadway. So do you want to be on Broadway or narrow way? All right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that narrow way gives us who we are in the Lord and what we're supposed to be doing, who we're supposed to be. Call me up. What's wrong? Oh, I got you, no problem. Lord just told me to tell you, boom, man, you rare. Wow, how could you hear God so clearly, so fast? How? You're valuable. That's supposed to be every single one of us. This isn't a Shane Wall thing. God told me to preach. And those who believe, every single one of y'all, y'all the ones going to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. Everybody look at me to lay hands on the sick. He said, no, you preach. If they believe, the signs will follow them that believe. believe. They'll lay hands. They're the valuable ones. Y'all are the valuable ones. I preach. Mm -mm -mm. It's like going to school to be the doctor. To be a doctor. The teacher is empowering y'all to go do it. That's what's, that's what's happening here. I get up, I teach you, this is how you do it, and you go out and you do it. You're valuable. You're priceless. You're precious. I go to your establishment and they're like, I'm so busy, oh my goodness, I've been praying for people all day. It's your fault. What do you mean it's my fault? If you couldn't get a prayer through, nobody would be coming to you. But you know how to pray and reach heaven and get things done on earth. You're valuable. Luke 17, verses 20, 
21, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, Jesus Christ, this is the basis of this little mini-series that God has given us, not little, but mini-series. When he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, lo here or, or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within every single one of you who are saved. Those listening and watching, the kingdom of God is within you. You're not going to see buildings coming up out of the ground with all its majesty. No, no, no. The kingdom of God is within you. Amen. You're not going to be able to say it's in Texas or it's in New Mexico. No, no, no. The kingdom of God is within every single one of you. You're valuable. But we have to learn how to release the kingdom of God that's within us. Yes. And that's what we've been learning these past couple of weeks. And we're going to continue to learn it today. Now, let me say something. <clears throat> Thank you, Daddy, for clearing your throat because I, I kind of needed that at that moment. <laughs> My father cleared his throat. He said, <clears throat> So, you know, people do that to get your attention. I'm t I need to get y'all attention right there. That was perfect. God is so perfect. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you right now. I'm about to teach you something that's going to empower you. And I'm not playing because I just learned it last Sunday. I think it was Sunday, Sunday or Monday. And I've been using it. This week. As you know, I like to say I don't practice what I preach. I preach what I've already been practicing. That way, once I've gone through a few days of doing it, I can teach you, okay, now let me tell you what's going to happen. Let me tell you what's not going to happen. And so I can really deliver it to you. So now, the power that you are about to receive will probably for some be like you've never experienced in your life, in your Christian life, you've not experienced this. I'm telling you, Latoya, you're about to go forth. I'm telling you, it's going to be like you've never fought. Many, it's, it's, it's about to just work. I want you all to really, really understand. Yes. I'm not trying to build this up in your mind at all. I'm not trying to put you on. But I literally have to, I have to say it like this because it's, it's so strong that when you utilize it, you almost have zero opposition. Almost zero opposition coming against you. In other words, it's like it has to work. It's like there's, there's no maybe to it. With what I'm about to teach, there's no maybe to it. Okay. As long as it's in conjunction with God. And I'm going to show you how that works as well. All right. So, Matthew 21, 18 and 19. Now in the morning as he returned into the city, he hungered. This is Jesus coming into the city and he's hungry. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only and said unto it, let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever and presently the fig tree withered away. I told you not too long ago, I used to have a fig tree in my backyard, in the former house I was living in. And... I never understood this scripture, but that made me understand it. I'm like, I, 
I, I didn't understand. He, he was a ways away and he saw leaves and he went and had nothing on it. I mean, maybe it just wasn't in fig season or something. I don't know. But I told y'all that anytime you see leaves on a fig tree, the figs are there also. You will never see leaves on a fig tree and there are no figs. It just looks like a bush of sticks when there are no figs. No leaves whatsoever. But as soon as you see leaves, as soon as you see leaves, figs are there as well. So when he saw the leaves, he said, wow, figs. So he, he went there and found nothing. Now, this is just a little footnote here. A lot of us have said, oh, this is my season. Oh, my goodness, this is my season. That's being very leafy. Very leafy. Oh, it's my season. This is my season. But be careful. Be very careful. Because when hungry people come to you and you don't have anything, you could be cursed. Oh, this is my season. Oh, yes, my season, my season. I come, I come. Oh, child, I ain't got, give me a word, give me a word. Child, I ain't got nothing for you. That was just a footnote. Jesus saw the fig tree. Saw the leaves, went, nothing was there. One of the other writers said Jesus ran to it. He was hungry. Man was hungry. He said, let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently, right then and there, the fig tree withered up. So, everything we do on earth as representing heaven is a witness. Amen. As I've been saying these weeks, witnessing is more than just telling a stranger about Jesus. Everything we do is a witness. What Jesus did here, it was a witness of heaven. So, today we're talking about witness. Words release God's kingdom. Amen, yes. Thank you, Lord. Words release God's kingdom. Jesus said, let no fruit his words released the kingdom of God. And it withered up. Ah, don't you know we literally have that power? We have that power. You got some weeds. And I've been trying to keep this garden free and just weeds, weeds. Use your power. Remember your rare. Yes. I say, child, please. I can probably speak that thing and get more weeds tomorrow than I ever had. Come on now. Remember, have faith in God and don't doubt yourself. We had that lesson a couple weeks ago. So now let's look at this. What was Jesus' first spoken word to the tree? Let. Let. Thank you so much for that. So. Why was Jesus influenced to use the word let? Why was he influenced to do that? Well, have you ever read Genesis 1 and 3 and God said, let there be light. And there was light. What are you saying? Well, let means to come into being. Commanding something to become, come to pass. Which means what? Showing an ability to understand and sharing the feelings of another. Okay, let me explain. When Jesus said to that tree, 
let no more fruit grow on you, that tree had to show its ability to understand and share Jesus' feelings, and it had to dry up. Because Jesus said, let. It had to become, that tree had to become whatever Jesus himself wanted. Because he said, let. In other words, become what I say. So, that is a command, in other words, that is a command given directly to an object. Because the Bible says Jesus said it to the tree. It's given directly to an object, and the object must fully cooperate with the command and allow the desire of the speaker to be as the speaker commanded. In other words, I command you to come in agreement with me. Me is capitalized because that is in essence what Jesus said. I command you to come in agreement with me. So I say, yeah, but that's Jesus. Uh Uh-huh. Matthew 21, 20 through 22. And please note, that's the same Jesus that lives in you. The same Jesus. Telling you today, you're about to be empowered. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, how soon is the fig tree withered away? He spoke this thing, and this, this thing withered away. Jesus answered, verse 21, Jesus answered and said unto them, verily I say unto you, if ye have faith and doubt not, mm, just read that, didn't we? Ye shall not only do this, which is done to the fig tree. Oh my goodness. In other words, this was done to it. What can say that you said something to make something be done to it? That person right there did that to me. And it's legal and it's biblical. But also, if you shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Okay, y'all follow me. All right, all right, I understand. Let's keep going. Uh, and all things whatsoever ye shall ask in believing, ye shall receive. No opposition. No opposition. You believe, you're going to receive it. That's just it. I'm not trying to make you happy. I'm going to make you happen. I'm not here to excite anybody. Most of y'all have heard me preach before. I don't moan. I don't tune up. I teach. You get it, and then you go out there and kill some barren trees or something. Now, again, a prerequisite, like I talked before. One must be given instruction on authority from our king to have and use such power. Make sure the Holy Spirit is leading you to do what you are about to do. All right. Genesis 1, and God said, let us, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. I was out there fishing, didn't catch anything. You didn't say let. Somebody says, okay, here we go. Okay, all right, all right. Don't want to believe it? And over the fowl of the air. Then birds, as soon as I wash my car, they go to bird. All on my car. You didn't say let. 
Either it's the Bible or it's not. Either we're supposed to believe this or it's just a good storybook. What is, what, what is this? Is this just a good storybook or are we really supposed to have dominion over the fowls of the air? Did he not say that? Birds right. yes. always coming, making a nest in this part. I, you didn't say let. And over the cattle and over all the earth. All the earth. God didn't say, let us have dominion. Let's make man and let them have dominion over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. You know, I told you all a while ago, I see a mosquito, I see a roach or something, I say, you're going to die. Never fails, it dies. Never fails. You know, mosquito, I mean, so you follow it, and it's like the thing just vanished. Where did, I was literally following it. Where in the world? I said, no problem, you're going to die. The dumb thing lands on something white. I said, told you you were going to die. Never fails. Literally never fails. All right. I wasn't trying to be impressive. I'm just teaching. (laughs) So look at this. During creation, God used the word let on an average of two times per day. So guess what? Being that we're to do what we see our father do, we should use let to create change, or command at least twice per day as the Holy Spirit leads. Boy, I've been saying let this week. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Successfully. Amen. Successfully. Um, Lord, help me to find this fast. Wow. God is the one who gave us dominion and wants us to do it as he did it using the word let. How did he create? Let there be light. Let there be fish. Let the waters divide and let, let the land divide the waters from and, and let the firmament. Let, 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 let. We think because it has happened, here's what it is. No, it ain't what it ain't. Uh 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 uh. Let. This isn't in my notes, but I want it to be in your notes. Write this. These three words, three of the most powerful words for you to know in a sentence. Everything has ears. Never forget that. As long as you live. If a fig tree with leaves and no fruit has ears, please know everything has ears. Peace! Be still. Somebody say he didn't use let there. It's inferred. Let peace. Be still. It's already inferred. Don't have to say that. As a matter of fact, if you look up let in the Greek, it is always paired with the verb, which means to allow this to happen. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. 
holy, holy, holy. Pray to find out these are things that God gave me. After, you know, like I said, I've been going through this and the Lord, he gives me things for this. Pray to find out God's will and have dominion on the earth by declaring it to whatever is being disobedient according to a revelation of the Holy Spirit to let be. You not going to have figs when I come here? I have dominion on the earth. But you're Jesus. I don't have dominion on, over this tree because I'm Jesus. I have dominion over this tree because I was born into a human form. I was born into being a man. And when I was with my father in heaven, he said, let us make man in our own image and let him, them, have dominion on earth. So it's not because I'm Jesus that I said that, but it's because I'm a man. Now I have dominion. So it was not my divinity that made that thing dry up. It was my humanism. My manhood, your womanhood. Yes. Wow, 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 wow. Jesus. Wow. Let them have dominion. So when I say let be, you have to let be. Situation happens, uh uh uh. Let such and such and so happen. Who are you talking to? Which is another point that he made. Who are you talking to? talking to. You want to know who you're talking to? Whoever is disobedient. <laughs> Whatever is disobedient. But well, how do I know if it's disobedient? Oh my goodness. I will tell you. This is good. Please take notes because I don't think you're going to remember and I want you to remember. I have a situation going on in my life. And Pastor Shane, I don't know what the deal is. What is it that you want and it's godly? What is it that you want? What godly thing do you want? I want so and so. What is being disobedient to allow it to happen? Whatever is being disobedient and is not bringing forth what you desire, tell it to let. Let it happen. Let it be. What does amen mean? So be it. So be it. it means so be it. In the original, it means so let it be. Hallelujah. So let it be. Oh, on my job, they keep taking away our benefits. Who keeps taking away your benefits? The board. Let the board not take away another benefit. Let the board add back the benefits in the name of Jesus. Everything that we have lost, everything that has been taken away, let the board add it back in the name of Jesus Christ. They're being disobedient. I have to take care of my family by the help of God. God gave me this job. We had great benefits and they took it up. We let the board. And then the Holy Spirit says, well, really, the board had to do this because business is down. Let everybody, Father God, who needs this business, let them leave the other businesses and come here to increase our income so that the board will add the benefits back. Let it be in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, let is a very powerful word that releases the verified. Now you have to be verified. You can go out here letting all you want. If you're not verified, if you don't belong to God, if you're not living for him, you don't have that authority, okay? 
Okie dokie. Let his very powerful word that releases the verified authority that King Jesus has bestowed upon those who have the kingdom of God inside of them. I promise you, if this did not work, I definitely, number one, would not have heard it from the Lord because I've never heard this anywhere else in my entire life. Number two, I would not have studied up on it, and I did, and you're going to find more scriptures all over the place with the word let in it that bring forth such power and authority. Mm, mm, mm. Even that that has been spoken to us. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Oh my goodness. All right. Study for yourself. Study for yourself. Somebody say, what's another one? It's in the Bible. Look it up. It's in the Bible. Look it up. See how nice I am? Here are other verses. <laughs> that give us usable references of authority for our everyday lives. Oh, you're so nice. Well, glory to God. And he said unto them, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. Child, please. My boss ain't gonna listen to nobody. She just thinks she, uh -uh -uh uh-uh-uh-uh. That's not how I flow. You see, remember, you're valuable you're valuable. You're rare. Right. Boss won't listen to nobody else. At the, the Sheila's here at the credit union, when I was working there, they would always ask me to go talk to my boss. They wanted something, they'd ask me to go talk to her. Shane, you go, you go ask her. <laughs> she do what you say. I didn't even have this revelation, so that was just pure favor. But now that I know this, woo, I'm going to be letting and letting and letting. Not there, I don't work there anymore, but there are the other places I just need what I need. So you say this, uh uh uh. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Let them hear. Yes, yes sir. Somebody else has problems on their job? You know, like, oh, I don't have those problems. <laughs> oh, let me rephrase that. They don't last long on my job. <laughs> Why? I don't let guest. Let's go to another one. John 7, 37 through 40. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Was anybody stopping them from coming? Let. Holy Spirit said to me this morning, this is why people think the universe works. You know, I just spoke it out into the universe and they, have, they, they think the universe is God. They think the universe is God. It's not the universe. You're not speaking into the universe. Speaking of something specific, something, an item that has ears that must obey. Let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, not in the way you choose to believe on me, a lot of people say, yeah, I believe Jesus. He was just this, this. No, 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 no. There's a specific way you have to believe on me. You have to believe on me as the scripture hath said. And I'm like, yeah, I believe he was a good man. That's not what the scripture hath said, so you don't get the benefits. You have to believe. I've never seen this until literally right now. You have to believe on me as the scripture hath said. If so, then out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. 
But this spake he of the Spirit, in other words, the Holy Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given. Not yet given. Because that Jesus was not yet glorified. He was still on the earth. Holy Spirit couldn't come until Jesus was back up in heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. Little side note. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said, of a truth, this is the prophet. When you speak. Now, I completely understand this, and I've been going back and forth with the Holy Spirit, not in argument, not in disagreement, but just in conversation. We have a will. Everybody has a will. You can't say, let my sister be saved. No, it doesn't work. If she doesn't want to be saved, and she just doesn't want to be saved, let my nephew leave that up. They have a will. God doesn't mess with our own wills. He gave us a free will because he wanted us to love him freely. Okay, we got that. Now, another one, John 8 and 7. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. You remember it was this lady, she was caught in, in adultery, caught in the very act of adultery, brought her to Jesus and said, according to the law, she's supposed to be stoned. He said, let he who is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone. Everything has ears. Every one of them said, well, I sure can't throw a stone. I sinned. A couple of them may have said, I actually sinned with her. So I sure can't throw no stone. She'd be like, I know you ain't trying to throw no stone at me. <laughs> let him cast the first stone. Somebody throwing stones at you? Somebody talking bad about you? Somebody blaming you for stuff? Even if you did it, this woman did it. She was caught in the act. She was wrong. There are no two ways about it. She was most definitely wrong. Oh my goodness gracious. But Jesus said, if you have never been wrong. Go ahead and throw a stone. Yes. If you don't, you, you didn't say, go ahead and throw the stone. You know, we're forgiven, but the way God looks at it, it's even deeper than forgiven. We're not guilty. And so we say, well, I'm forgiven because I did wrong and this. God said, no, not guilty. Wow, wow, wow. Mm. No, but I did it. Not, not guilty. Mm. Not guilty. Mm. Why? Because, yeah, yeah, you, you stepped out of me, but you're backing me. So anybody in Christ Jesus is a new creature. When a baby is born, it doesn't have a past. When puppies are born, they don't have a past. They're a new creature. You, so you're not guilty. I don't care what you did. You're not guilty. You're not guilty. Yes, sir. You, so let me say it like this. When God forgives you, you are now not guilty. Amen. This is like somebody who committed murder stand before the judge. The judge said, I forgive you. You're not guilty. You can go on home now. That's the way the Father is. Just so you'll know. Then he asked her, he said, where are your accusers? She looked up and said, none, Lord. He said, neither do I. Then he gave her instructions. Go your way and sin no more. You're not guilty. Don't go and make yourself guilty. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. 
you were guilty. I now say, you're not guilty. Don't go be guilty again. That's what he's saying to every single one of us. You're going to die. Every single one of us. Whatever you've done wrong. So I said, I would get saved, but I don't know me. I, you know, I got to wait. I know I'm going to be serious. There's no such thing. There's literally no such thing. Except you land on your deathbed, and at that point, oh my goodness gracious, a life. I don't, mm -mm, don't want that experience. Don't want that experience. Trust me, because only God can judge that. Because if you land on your deathbed, you haven't lived for God all that long time, now on your deathbed, you're just scared. Are you sincerely really giving your life to God? Or are you just scared, now I might go to hell? God, only God can judge that heart. Only God. That's why I just love living for him. Let him know, while I'm alive, I want to live. I want to do whatever you want me to do. Let him cast the first stone. Somebody go, ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, I just felt this strong. Goodness gracious. Some, somebody going to have to use that, maybe even today. I just felt it so strong. Somebody come to you about what somebody did wrong, say, wait, wait, wait. Only if you have not sinned in this way can you talk about this person. You cast in a stone. You cast in a stone. I don't know why we think we so... Got to have friends that we can't be bold about God. We'd rather, they did what? And you feel the conviction like, I should not be listening to this trash. I should not be entertaining this mess. But here I am on the phone. My God. You said they did so. And I, now you know I'm not going to talk about this, right? I can't cast no, and you can't cast no stone either because I know you and you know me. We cannot cast no stones at that person, but do nothing but just pray. Because guess what? What if that person has already repented and now we throwing stones at a repentant heart? Somebody who, who God has said is not guilty. And we talking about them right now. We don't know. We bringing stuff up that God has literally, I heard the Holy Spirit just say that God has no record of. Yeah. It's not even a record in heaven yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you're forgiven, there's no record. It has been, it hasn't even been expunged. It's like it never even happened. That's what justified means. Just as if I'd never done it. I'm justified through Christ. It's like I never did it. Lord, you remember I did so and so? No, I don't. He remembers our sins no more. That's the Bible. What you've done is literally done. There is no record of it. It's not burned to ashes. There are even no ashes there. It, there's nothing. It's done. So, she, she's not guilty, so cast the first stone at a guilty, at, at a guilty woman who has been forgiven and pronounced not guilty. I pronounce you not guilty. My judgment is for the defendant, not guilty. John twelve twenty six. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. Of course, if I'm following Jesus, wherever he is, I'm going to be there. Makes sense. Follow the leader. You'll end up where the leader ends up. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. If any man serve, let him follow me. Wow. You serve him, follow him, follow him. Witness, words, release God's kingdom. So, let 
now you see why I was so persistent and, and I had to really take my time to let you know, listen, this is real. This actually works. And we cannot afford to let the enemy keep allowing stuff to happen that we don't address. Does the devil have dominion on the earth? Does the devil have dominion on the earth? Yeah. Only through us. Only through us. Because we have dominion. But who influences our power over the domain? Yeah. Who influences us? Yeah. Oh, Father. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You. you have given us such a tool, such a weapon in our arsenal to use here on the earth, literally against the devil. Your word declares the weapons of our warfare, they are carnal, but they're mighty through you to the pulling down of strongholds simply by our words. Jesus spoke to Lazarus. Come forth. Father, we have so many words that we use to complain about the situation instead of talking to the disobedient of the situation. There is a direct target. There is a direct entity who has caused so much hurt in our lives, caused so much pain, and we will complain about that entity instead of speaking to the entity as Jesus did. I don't know if we are ashamed of you, Lord, or if it's, some are. Some are ashamed of you and they don't want to speak of you publicly. They don't want to declare publicly. And some of us, Lord God, just don't know if you're going to do it or not. If you're going to back up our words. Forgive us for not having faith in you and belief in ourselves. And Lord, there are some, as we here as a church, we fast one day every week, 24 hours, no water, on an individual basis. Some are not fasting. And Jesus told us, this kind comes out only by prayer and fasting. So some people are going through things in their lives and they're trying to speak, they're trying to pray and trying to get rid of it, but it's not going because they're not fasting. If they can medically fast, because of course you understand some have to eat with their medicines and things of that nature. So Lord, I just thank you that you gave us a perfect formula that works here in the earth because we know your kingdom has come to the earth. We prayed it. It's here. We're to operate just like that, to release your kingdom. Every week you're teaching us how to release your kingdom. We can lay hands. We can speak. And you're going to continue to show us. And Father, you even gave us specifics. Let be for your glory. And it all has to be for your glory. Hmm. Lord, I thank you. Father, you just told me that there are some people here who have made investments. And you even said there are some people who will make investments into their own business and different things that you want. Just as Jesus spoke to that tree. You want us to speak to our investments. We've invested money. We've invested time. And we speak to what we have invested in. 
as you're saying to me now, not the money itself, but what we have invested in, we speak to it. Let increase come greatly. Let the increase come. Hallelujah. Lord, this message literally makes us look at our lives and your will for our lives. So now, Lord God, instead of complaining, we're, we're, we're literally going to be able to look at our lives and then go in prayer and say, Father, what do you want here? Because, Father, you don't have dominion on the earth. You said, let us have it. So you tell me what you want, and then I will release it since I'm made in your image and after your likeness, and I'm your child. And you said, I have dominion. So, Lord... I release whatever you say. What do you want me to command to let? I'll do it, Lord. Yes, it will benefit me. Yes, it will benefit my family. Yes, we will enjoy this so much. But it's you who will be glorified. Yes, Jesus was hungry. Yes, he would have enjoyed eating figs to literally satisfy his hunger. But he gave you glory because he used that as a lesson. And he taught the disciples, just as you have used me today, to teach these your kids, your children, your sons, your daughters, those who are here, those listening and watching. You taught us. You taught us. That's why you said, don't complain. Don't, don't, don't have anxiety. Use let. Speak, 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 speak. That releases my kingdom that's within you. Remember I said, my kingdom is within you. So when you say let, because the king has authorized you, whatever you say, that thing has to obey you. Remember, let means it has to come in agreement with you. Oh, Father, thank you. You already set it up on the earth. We're going to do your will, Lord. We're going to be who you want us to be. Not our will, but thy will be done. Yes. Mm. Let us, let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint. You had Paul to tell Timothy, let no man despise thy youth. Thank you, God. That let even empowers us when it's directed directly to us. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the power that we have through your word. You backing up our words because you're the king and you give us the authority to speak. And whatever we speak to knows we have authority over it because every demon, every devil, every plant, every fish, every bird of the air knows, knows, knows you've already spoken. We have dominion. You spoke that at creation. So it's been all that long time. And this makes us rare. Who can speak to birds and they obey? Who can speak to fish and they obey? Who can speak to weather and it obeys? What human being can do that? But the ones who believe. As the scripture hath said. Thank you, Lord.
for teaching us, training us, building us up. So we, that we can be more valuable in the earth. Valuable to you. Valuable to you. Valuable to you. So people can have exactly what they need to have. We want to help, Lord. You're not jumping off of your throne coming down here. Jesus isn't going to jump off of his throne and come down here. We are to do it and we're going to do it for your glory. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. We'll do it. We'll do it. Amen. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord. There may be someone here who says, I don't know Jesus. I don't, I don't know Jesus as Lord. I don't know Jesus as Savior. I don't have a relationship with him like I should. And I want to give my life to him. Oh, he wants our lives. He just wants our lives. So I want everybody to bow your head, close your eyes. And if you're here and you say, yes, I want to give my life to the Lord. I need to renew my relationship with him. I want to just go directly in prayer with you now. Just repeat after me and say, Father, I come now in Jesus' name. I've sinned and I'm a sinner and I want to be saved. I belong to you. Come into my life. I let you live through me. Jesus. I be pleased to our Father. Just as you were pleasing. Pleasing. To our Father. Father, thank you for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me of all my sins. I am not only forgiven, but I'm now not guilty. I will live for you and do your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.